What's up guys, Shane here with part two of the Kevin Ross training interview and yes, sparring, because let's be honest, that's why I clicked on this video, right? You wanna see Shane get beat up by Kevin Ross? Well, don't worry, because this video definitely delivers. Let me remind you, go easy on me in the comments section. There's levels to this, and I'm nowhere near the level of Kevin Ross. I mean, he's fought against the best of the best, Malapet, Sanchai. He went easy on me when we sparred, and he still threw me around like a rag doll. In my own home, in my own gym. Now, like I said, Kevin's an awesome guy. Uh, please support him on his journey. Links in the description below for his Instagram. Check out his book, Dancing with Sanchai. But until then, sit back and enjoy the footage of us chatting and sparring. Do you meditate? Mm, I don't know. I mean, some might consider it meditation. I guess yeah, I spend time centering myself and, you know, clearing out the noise, I would mm -hmm. say. Um, but it's more of a ongoing thing as opposed to, like, sit here and do this. Yeah. You know, I feel like I'm constantly in that state or I try to keep myself in that whenever possible you know when I'm not doing something where I need that much attention or you know, so I'm just sitting and waiting for something that kind of thing it's not like I'm look, always looking for something else to do yeah, yeah you know taking taking advantage of the time or, or setting that time aside you know I think we often think about meditation as like it has to be this thing you know where it can just be sitting in silence for a moment. I mean, that in itself is meditation. Yeah. You know. So, in that aspect, yeah, I'd say I meditate all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm meditating right now, talking to you. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. I feel like these days, if you're not on your phone, you're meditating. Like, if you're mindful of the things yeah. the outside the real yeah, world. Yeah, I mean, that's really it. Just, just being mindful. Yeah. You know, and I think I really, I go out of my way to try to be more mindful as often as possible. Yeah. So I'm not getting caught up in that mindless work, mindless busyness, you know, that we, we all kind of tend to do. We're always like, we have to be doing something or else we're not doing anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's, you should not be doing something for a minute to like stop and decompress. And it's, we live in such a noisy world where very few people can do that. And that's why there's so much chaos and turmoil and stress and all these things. Yeah. Because they don't know how to like separate those two worlds. I got two point. Two part question, how do you how do you relax and then what do you do for recovery? I'm kinda always relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I, even I, when I'm training? An I'm an extremely relaxed per person. Um to an extent, yeah. yeah. Um but that's kind of the thing. It's like when I'm training I give everything to training. When I'm not training I don't want to do anything. I wanna just relax and not do anything, you know, I'm not like looking to go out and party or hang out with people, it's like I need peace, because yeah. like there's so much violence and, and, and hmm. exertion, you know what I'm saying, so it's like I'm, I'm trying to offset that with just nothing, balance, nothing. like what do you do when, when you, what do you time off, nothing, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. my favorite thing to do is nothing, huh. you know what I mean, that's cool, like, I, don't think, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, no, no. I, I mean, like, I think, again, I think we try to put like, labels on things and think we have to be a certain way or talk a certain way and if we don't it's almost viewed as wrong where I mean there is no right way 
it's just the way you are and mm -hmm. adjusting with everybody else. It's a society thing for sure. Yeah. Which is, you know, you, you understand that when you travel the world and you see that it's not, not everybody is this way. Yeah. You know, and I think that's such a, an important thing about traveling and expanding your horizons is you're not so fixated on this one mentality and this mm -hmm. one approach to life and like this is the way we have to do it. This is these are the things we need in order to be successful. You know, it's it's uh, life is very unique, and, and it's every individual have, has their own way and their own path to uh, to carve. You know, there's no set way to do anything. People talk about perspective all the time, but they don't actually. I don't think people actually understand, or most people, they're like, ah, it's all perspective, but I don't think they actually know what they're saying when they see it. <laughs> and, and it's like, I, I try to convince friends and my brothers all the time, I'm like, you guys gotta travel, and they're like, yeah, yeah, and I'm like, no, not to like a resort, like, you gotta go to other yeah. countries, you gotta see other cultures, you gotta see the way that, the, the things that bring people happiness are much different than, than what you're used to here. And then seeing other people's perspective, and actually being in it is the only way to actually mm -hmm. understand it. Mm -hmm. But you, you gotta be willing to risk being uncomfortable and to go into those places to see what it really is like. Hmm. I mean, basically, what most people do is they just go to an America in a different country, you know, a resort that's yeah. all nice. And oh, exactly. Everything. Like you're in the, the the staff is all speaking English and <laughs> you know five star hotel. Like you're still in America. Exactly. You gotta get out of America, even if you're in another country. And it's like the best thing, especially. Um, you know, as you're growing up, I think it's uh, invaluable, you know, when that, even for me, just, just traveling and, and spending so much time in different cities and states and seeing different aspects of life, you know, showed me so much early on. I think that's what helped me develop my mentality was seeing every aspect of life and rich and poor and, and east and west and everything in between. You have to really understand that it's not, things aren't what they just appear to be. You know, just because yeah. you're rich doesn't mean you're happy, just because you're poor doesn't mean you're miserable. Yeah. And every aspect in between that, you know, it really forces you to broaden your horizons. You ever think about becoming a monk? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, maybe for like a day, yeah, a, yeah, week, a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't know Seven how days. much I could handle that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, uh, I, I'm monkish enough yeah, on yeah. my own. What uh recovery? What's recovery like for you? Do you do uh do you do float? Do you do cryo, compression therapy? Um, massage. You know I've, I've kind of played around with a little bit of everything. You know, uh, I'd say weekly massage and chiropractor are probably my two staples that um, I'm always doing, and those are the ones where if I don't do, I notice. Hmm. You know, cryo is great, ice baths, that kind of thing. But I often use those more for the extreme times, like couple weeks out from a fight and yeah. like I need to as much help as I can get you know I, I I do so much on my own as well with like stretching and warming up and that was something I really I, I don't know I wouldn't say I was taught it but I just started understanding it very early maybe it was because I started so late I'm like <laughs> I need all the help I can get yeah yeah you know so that's that's something I, I recognize that not a lot of people do until it's almost like they wait until they're injured or it's too late you know, and then it's like, dude, I like, sometimes I warm up as much as I work out, yeah. time-wise. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a daily thing for me, mm. ongoing. You know, it's, uh, you know, I think that's something the, the other um, cultures understand is you have to keep your body moving forever. Like, as soon as you stop, your body stops, shuts down, you get old quicker. Mm. So do you think you'll work out to the day you die, like, do you think you'll be one of those guys that's always moving? I would, I will move to the day I die without question. Yeah. Yeah. I think more along the lines of, I just understand what happens when you don't. Yeah. You know, it's like, if you're ready to give up and stop moving, you know, your body's going to plummet quickly. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's, uh, I mean, you see it every day, just, just walking around, you understand, like, the difference of ages, or the, you can see people at the same age, this person moves and is active, even if it's just walking. And this person sits on the butt all day, eats crap, you know, ingests crap in their mind, um, you know, and, and they look 20 years older. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why I still look like a baby. <laughs> Speaking of dying, what happens, what do you believe in, uh, what's, your, what's your view on death and what happens when you die? My view on death? My, I'd say that I've always had the belief that 
there's much more than we could ever possibly understand. Um, that this is a pit stop and a long journey. Um, you know, as far as like religion and that kind of thing goes, uh, I view all those things as kind of tools to help you understand um, that aspect of life, um, spiritual side of things. I think it's one of those things where everybody's like fighting to say their ways the right way and everyone else is wrong and that's what makes religion so awful you know you take this very beautiful thing that can bring so much peace and happiness and fulfillment and you make it ugly you know we, we, we live in a society where we have a team aspect to things you know it's like I have to be right and that means you're wrong where maybe we're all wrong or maybe everyone has a little bit of truth or maybe everybody's truth is just their understanding of the same exact thing you know, I'm not, uh, I don't want to be like set on like, this is the only way to do it. And you know, I, I think some people view that as wrong. Uh, I mean, I know people view that as wrong, but I, 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 I try to keep an open mind to everything and to understand that um, nobody knows anything. <laughs> We're all just kind of winging it out here. And, and but a lot of people don't realize that. They think they know. Yeah, and if you find something that brings you peace and understanding, then I'm all for it. Um, you know, and, and even if it's not something I believe in, I, I would still keep a open mind to it. You know, I, I, I equate everything the same way I look at like fighting. You know, it's like I can, I can learn things from you even if it's how to do things wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, like you should be able to learn from everybody. Even if it's incorrect things, or you know, just seeing a different perspective, like yeah, I don't believe that, or I don't look at it that way, but it can open my mind up and maybe help me understand what I do know better, or or, or solidify my own beliefs just by understanding your perspective and understanding that not everybody sees things the same way as you, and not everybody was raised the same way as you, and um, you know, it's it's I think I think it's far too complex a thing that we could ever hope to even understand. And we try to simplify it with um, mm -hmm. religion and things like that, where I don't think you could even put it into words. I think it's too great of a thing. We don't have the language to describe what it actually is. And we, we, we do try to simplify it and put labels on it. And I think that takes away from everything that it really is and everything that it should be. You know. It was supposed to be in the beginning, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, you know, I, I, you, that's just the way human beings are, though. Mm -hmm. We don't understand things and we label them, um, you know, we, 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 we vilify certain things because it makes us feel better about our own, the way we are, and, you know, like, I'm right, I'm, I'm, I'm the right uh, color, I'm the right uh, um, financial status and, and all these things and um, you know I, I think that goes across so many different aspects of life hmm. is that mentality is, is what's so wrong with the world you know it's, it's, it's we are set in our ways and we are right and you're wrong yeah you know? yeah. yeah I see always oh, see so many parallels with martial arts and religion too and now I think mixed martial arts is a great thing I think I think organizations, some organizations go about the wrong way and they promote the wrong people or the wrong antics. Mm -hmm. But even just in the past 10 years, there's been such a change between like my way, Muay Thai is, is the best martial art, it beats any other martial art or Jiu Jitsu or whatever it may be. But that's the kind of, it's like the same thing with religion. I feel like people are just like so proud of what they believe and everything else is just 100% wrong. Whereas the mission of the martial art is just to better the person, build confidence, teach self-defense, or whatever it may be, but mm -hmm. it, it always seems like, yeah, that's just, that's one thing I always, I, I, I have a theory, I have a theory that like mixed martial arts can somehow bring world peace. Well, I would completely agree with you on that aspect of it forces individuals to strip away barriers, you know, just from a cultural aspect. Uh, or religious aspect or, or again a financial aspect when you're in a gym those things should <laughs> go away yeah at least to some extent and you really understand that we're all just human beings trying to make our own way um, and I think that's, what, that's such a beautiful thing about uh, martial arts and you know sports in general and things like that but even more so <clears throat> when it comes to martial arts because you're, you're really 
forced into it more because um, it is more of a one-on-one -on -one thing where like a team thing you can still get stuck in that mm -hmm. group but even in martial arts you know the gym in itself can become you can get stuck in that aspect but it's more uh, of a widely uh, accepted uh, practice mentality it's like there there's no religion here there's no race here yeah um, there's no uh, um, status here we're all just trying to be better yeah yeah you know? and, and yeah again like you said I think that mentality is what the world definitely needs and the more of it that we can get the better <clears throat> yeah. it's a damn good lesson right there accept people and love people yeah. you know it's so simple <laughs> it is yeah. it is but it, it's it's such an important message isn't that what Elon Musk said at the end of Rogan? <laughs> what about uh, pretty much that? He's like, yeah. if you could send a message to to the world. He's like, uh, don't judge, love people. Yeah, it's pretty much that. Yeah. yeah. We got deep quick, didn't we? Happens. Yeah, you can only ever show people the door, show them the way. They have to go through it on their own. You can't push them through. And I mean, it's like anything else, like. You can't hand somebody something because they're not going to learn from that. Mm -hmm. You can't give somebody a million dollars because they're not going to do it and they're mm -hmm. going to destroy their life. You got to show them how to get the things that they want and instill work ethic and instill the, um, that want for better things. You know, like even for myself, it's like I, I I knew there was this thing I wanted, but it wasn't until you know I, I realized and understood what I was pissing away my life, you know, it's like, you, you're wasting your life when so many people don't get to live, you know, so many people don't even get the choice to fail at things they're afraid of, and you're, you have every chance in the world, and you're just too scared to do this, you're too hesitant because you don't think you can, or, or whatever the case may be, and, you know, uh, that just hit me in the face one day, I was like, fuck, dude, I was like, pissed away, it was like 22 years of my life, because I was running away from something that I really wanted and I was trying to hide it by drinking every day and destroying myself and killing myself. And I was like, from that day forward, was every moment I have is an opportunity to progress and to get better and to go after things that I believe in and that I know is true and that I feel. But, uh, you know, I, I definitely understand why so many people don't and why so many people settle for this complacency and what's the secret like what was the switch for you would would have had a people because I know a lot of people a lot of friends that are afraid of stepping outside of their comfort zone and I know it's it's 100% what they need to do yeah um, well so for me one of my best friends passed away when I was 19 but you know it still took me four years after that because, you know, it's like when it happened, I was like, okay, I, I, and he was the only person I ever told about this dream I had of fighting. And, you know, he was the one that was like, well, why don't you? <laughs> what are you doing? And I was like, I, I don't know, I, I'm old, you know, mm -hmm. I was 19 at the time, 18, and uh, I was like, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I'd be any good. Like, so, what does that have to do with anything? I think that is real, I, like, understand, like, you're never gonna know until you try. Uh, uh, not until you try to you give it everything that you have and refuse to ever give up. Um, we take too many things as excuses not to go after things. Well, I have this or that or the other. When you really look at, especially individuals who have made it, they, they faced insurmountable odds and overcame so much and, and failed so many times over and over and over and over and over again. Those are the people who make it. It's not that they didn't have anything working against them. Everybody has something working against them and more than likely the, the people you, you're viewing as where you want to get to have faced more than you could ever even imagine. You know, and I, I think the problem is most of them we just don't know that. You know, because all we see is the outside. We see the glitz, the glamour, the fame. We don't know what that person went through. We don't know how they got to where they got to. We don't know how many times they failed or and continually fail. You know, like like, and that's why I try to be very vocal about all the things that I go through. Like I, I still deal with the same doubts and questions and, and everything that I dealt with before I started. It's not like they just went away. 
you know what I mean? They, they change and you learn how to handle them better, but, but I still have just as many um, doubts today that I did, you know, 19, 18 years ago. It's just accepting them and going forward anyway. Like, yeah, maybe I'm gonna fail, but I'm never gonna know until I give it everything that I have. And it's, it's like telling people, trying to express that to somebody, like, you'll, you'll be okay. Well, maybe it won't be okay. Maybe it won't work out. But the thing that you want has to outweigh all those other things, all that fear, all the failures you're gonna face. You have to be singularly focused on that end goal, knowing that it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter how many times you fail. Like I got stopped my first fight, and uh, I was like, "Well, maybe this isn't for me." You know, like like I was like telling myself like, and, like I picked it up so quickly, and like I was like I was just natural at, at, at like right away. People thought I'd been doing this for years and years and years. And then, you know, in my mind, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna go out there and just do me, do me, I'm gonna get that, that win and just keep going up this skyrocket, you know? Yeah. The sky's the limit, it's like, boom, <laughs> done. Yeah. And, you know, that, that first, you know, 24 hours after that, it was just, man, I spent all this time going after this, like, maybe this isn't for me. And what I realized was the results don't mean anything, not that they don't mean anything to me, but if those are the only things keeping me doing this, like, if, am I only gonna do this if I win? Am I, am I only gonna do this if I look good? If, am I only gonna do this if I make money? Am I only gonna do this, all these reasons? Then you shouldn't do it at all. Unless that's your driving force, <laughs> which it w wasn't for me. And then I realized, I, if I lose every fight, I still love this. I'm still bettering myself through this. Um, I'm still improving and continually trying to improve myself. The results are just one piece of the puzzle. You know, those those don't um, tell me whether or not this is worth it. It's am I gonna look back when I'm done with this and know that I gave this sport everything that I had, and that has very little to do with what successes and failures I had along the way. Those are just kind of points along the path. But you know, it's like when I look back, or when anybody looks back over their career. It's not necessarily the, the wins and the losses, it's, it's, it's the competition themselves, like, like and what, I, what I put out there. You know, of course we always want to win, but, but I have a lot more um, gratitude and appreciation for, for a lot of the losses that I've had, um, for various reasons, you know, it's, it's not always just about the results of the fight, it's like, what happened in that fight, did, did, did I like, have to like really dig down and push myself through um, some serious injuries or did, what, what, what did I overcome leading up to that fight and still went forward anyway you know that kind of thing those those are what you look back on through your career through your life um, it's not necessarily these, these great victories that are the things that stand out in your mind it's, it's how you developed and the things you learned along the way and how you progressed it's not a uh, you know, it's like a, a buddy of mine always said, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. You know, you're not looking at these small moments. You know, you have to in, in, as time goes on, but you're going to look back over the whole span of things. There's going to be ups, there's going to be downs, you know, that's going to happen. And, but far too often, we're so singularly focused on the result of something as like, should I or shouldn't I do this? Which that should help steer you. <laughs> Maybe you're just not doing the, the right things. You know, it, it shouldn't tell you this is right or this is wrong. It's just a guide, like so many things. It's just a, a, a way to navigate. Like maybe maybe you are going the exact way you should be going. It might not seem that way because you're losing or whatever, but maybe you're fighting people with 100, 200 more fights than you. You're gonna be way better than this person who's winning all these fights, but they're fighting terrible people. Yeah. You know, and, uh, that was something I got to see very early on was that aspect of fighting. It's like, just because you're winning, just because you're undefeated, that doesn't tell you everything there is to know. And like, who are you fighting? Right, right. What's the level you're fighting at? What were the circumstances that went into that fight? What right. happened? You know, there, there's so much more to it than a win or a loss, or, or, or good or bad, and yeah. you know, it, it's a very complex thing that you can't, you can't go off of um, 
what's on the surface all the time. I, I think embracing stepping outside of your comfort zone, the fear, embracing the fear, and kind of enjoying it is, is a big secret to it too. Because imagine watching a movie where the main character doesn't have a problem. Yeah. It would be the most boring yeah. movie in the world. Yeah. If you're only winning fights, like you said, and you're fighting nobodies, yeah. you, you didn't create a legacy. No. You, you cheated. You took the easy route. But if you're losing, you're going through depression, you're coming out of it, and you're trying it again, you lose again, you try it again, you're, you're telling the story, you're creating a really good story, and you're proving to other people that I didn't have it easy. Mm. In fact, I had it really, really hard, really difficult, but I didn't give up. I continued when I was down, I kept pushing, I stayed focused on what my dream was, on what my goal was, and no matter what, I stuck to, stuck to it and made it happen. Yeah, it's, it seems we have this uh, belief that if we're going the way we should, it should be easy. <laughs> Things should work out. Right. When usually it's the opposite. A lot of times the way you're going, the, the, if you're going in the right direction, it's probably going to be more difficult than you could possibly imagine. A lot of times that should be telling you you're going the right way because it's going to be hard. Mm. It's going to be hard to achieve the things you want to achieve. Wow. We don't grow through without resistance. You know, it, you equate things to, to like building muscle. You can't build muscle without breaking them down. Right. If you understand that, is how life works. Like it's going to be hard. Understand that it's going to be hard, extremely hard. Accept that it's going to be hard. Accept that there's going to be failure. Accept that there's going to be fear, and go forward anyway. Yeah. yeah. We we think people like fighters, for example, like oh nobody's afraid. They they don't look afraid when they're in there. Most are afraid. That was something I that didn't understand because I'm a weirdo and I'm on the other end of the spectrum where I get super calm. I thought everybody was like me until a couple of years later I, I, uh, I was cornering one of my coaches, this Thai guy, he had like 300 fights and I could not believe how nervous he was. Wow. I'm like, what is wrong with you, yeah, dude? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you have so many fights. He's like, so? Like, what does that have to do with it? Like, I still want to do well. You know, anything can happen in there. A lot of times it doesn't get better, it actually gets worse. You just learn how to deal with it better. Because the pressure gets worse, the, the, the talent gets higher. Mm -hmm. You think it's gonna go away? No, a lot of times it gets much, 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 much worse. You just get experience. So yeah. you learn how to handle it and stay composed. Huh. But, but it, it, uh, more often than not, those things get, get greater as, as you elevate your game. They don't get easier. You just learn how to deal with them better. It's like we all have fear to an extent or, or, you know, maybe it's not fear, but, but um, you know, like, like I, don't, I don't feel fear, but I want to do well. You know, I want to, I know, and I know how quickly they can go badly, so I understand um, that sense of it. You know, I don't, I have a different mindset than, than most people do for whatever reason. And, and again, I'm more on the calm side and I have to amp myself up because naturally I could be sleeping, mm -hmm. you know, but, mm -hmm. but, I think what a lot of people don't understand is that can be so much worse than being too nervous. Because yeah. at least if you're nervous, you have adrenaline, you're going into something that could potentially cause you serious harm, if not death. And you better be a little afraid and you better have some adrenaline going. You're doing something extremely dangerous. It's, it's a good thing. Fear is a wonderful, wonderful tool. It's, a, it's, it's just a matter of how it affects you. That's all it really is. You know, fear is a wonderful greatest thing in the world it'll help you help you more than anything it's you just got to learn how to harness and control it a couple of things you said there made me think and it's true like that the higher you get the higher level of fighting the higher level of competition of course is going to be more challenging but then you also have to, you're you're in the limelight yeah all eyes are on you at that point yeah. so more people are watching more people yeah. are going to see you lose and if more you people do. are expecting you to uh, fight and perform a certain way right right and that's uh, yeah so <laughs> that's no good that leads me to my next question have you ever dealt with any trolls online like do you have any people who i've I, you know i've actually been pretty uh fortunate in yeah. that aspect of it i don't know what it is maybe just the way i am i've had very few people over the years that were kind of really negative to me um you know a few here and there because I can't imagine what they would say to you. What what kind of stuff? Like, um, 
I'm just type and you know, <laughs> you know, right. somebody like something that I always found funny is somebody said something about like I have a unnatural ability to not get tired, like it's some like freak genetic gene or something. You know, not that it comes from hard work and <laughs> discipline and mindset, oh, yeah. you know, and all that kinds of stuff. I always thought that was pretty funny. I'm like, yeah. wow, I guess I don't need to work out anymore. <laughs> this is great. Um, but yeah, I, I've, I've been very fortunate um, to not have to have dealt with it like, like so many people do. Um, I, I think it's the way you carry yourself. I yeah. really do. Yeah. I really do. If, if you're cocky, if you, if you boast, I think. Most yeah. people that that's, you're, they, well, you're kind of asking for it. Yeah. You, gotta, yeah. you know, if you're gonna do that, you gotta know that's gonna come with it. So yeah, I don't. Uh, you know, I've always been on this side of things naturally anyway. Um, mm. But co the way when I was coming up, I I had two people at the gym who were on extreme sides of that. One very extremely cocky, loud, ran his mouth. The other extremely humble, um, quiet, hardworking. And I so it was like wow, you can be a hardcore fighter and you don't have to talk about it. Like, yeah. like or you shouldn't talk about it. Like, yeah. You don't need to tell people how good you are, just be that person. Um, so that just motivated me to be even more so on the side I'm already on naturally. Um, you know, and, and and that's, you know, what I think is really about, you know, there's some, uh, I used to talk, me and Joe used to talk about it all the time because, you know, he's... Uh, he gets a little extreme on the run in his mouth side of things and I'm over here and like there was a period of time when he started getting away from that and trying to be a little bit nicer and I was like well don't do that either I just I was like you just don't have to go out of your way to be a jerk all the time right. I'm like if you don't like somebody be very vocal about it but if you don't if there's no problem there don't create one because you think that's what you're supposed to do and I, I, I see that's a big problem these days is people feel like they're supposed to do that, whereas they don't understand the fight will speak for itself. And if that is really there, you know, there's always magnifying things. You know, if there's a little bit of a dislike, you know, we're gonna show, we're gonna bring the show out, yeah. you know, but don't feel the need to do that because it's what you're supposed to do, you know, and that's when things don't come off as genuine. And I think that's the most important part of, of really anything is just being genuine to who you really are. If you if you are this loud mouth person, well, be that way. You know, I think I think life needs every color, every aspect of people. You know, it's not everybody needs to be this humble, quiet person. Wow. We need loud people. We need we need all the colors of the rainbow right. in order for life to be beautiful. We don't want a bunch of sane people. I don't want to hang out with people who are just like me. <laughs> That would be really boring. <laughs> I knew people who are, are, you know, um, are the complete opposite of me. So I can see that and be like, oh, I can see things a little bit differently. Like, yeah, I'm not that way, but but I can see pieces of it. You know, like I don't just want to be who I am. I want to continually grow and, and try different things. And you know, whether that's in fighting or, or just life in general, it's it's it, there's so many flavors of of life to explore. You want to you want to be stuck with vanilla your whole life. I don't. No. I like that. <laughs> wow. Uh, well, Kev, thank you so much. A lot of really important lessons here from a very experienced, uh, been there, done that. Can I call you a legend? You can. I, I, I wouldn't call he's, myself he's, that. He's not going to accept it. But I, I to <laughs> me, you're, you're an inspiration, um, someone I, I definitely look up to. I appreciate, really appreciate it. Me. Thank awesome you. Awesome stuff. Guys, check out Kevin Ross. Links in the description below for his Instagram. Uh, we'll put your book in there as well, Dancing with Sanchai. Um, I know most of you guys watching are fans of Sanchai. We all are. Kevin fought him and uh, put up a damn good fight against him. It's a great I'm match. I'm a fan of him, too. Yeah, yeah. We're all fans of Sanchai. Sanchai's a great guy. I can guy. do nothing. Exactly. So uh, check it out. Read the book. It's a great book. Link will be in the description below so you can grab a copy for yourself. Until then, I'm Shane. And this is Kevin Ross. Fight tips for the underdogs. Disrespectful. It is. <laughs>